in Iman's last video, he used this video and that's also what we're going to create. So I will explain everything to style the scene, to create these objects and also to animate everything. And if you want this template, you can download it in the description for a small fee to also support this channel. If you just want to follow the tutorial and use the assets that I'm also using, you can download those two in the description. Let's go. You'll see this animation with text. I'm going to explain that, of course. Then you also see these 3D layers come up and this whole scene of course is the grid now what we're gonna do first is i'm gonna explain you how to create this scene and then also uh, how to animate it later on so let's create the scene first i'm gonna start with the background so i'm gonna go to layer new solid this beautiful red and i'm gonna add a grid to it and if we zoom in you can see this grid uh, we will change this to 3d and then i'm gonna position it and i'm gonna rotate it on the x a rotation just like this now i'll actually rotate it even more and then we can scale the layer so it's more like something like this maybe i'll move it down a bit rotate it even more then go to the effect controls and then we're gonna change the grid so what you want to do is make it really tiny for example like this and we'll also change the other points closer together not too much and we'll change the border to 10. Now there's a couple things that we still need to do. Change the blending mode to screen and then we'll add a gradient on this layer too. Can just be a gradient ramp. Just make sure that it's above the grid and then we'll change this color to a, maybe a bit darker blue, something like this. And then the end color is gonna be also blue, but then a bit lighter. Then change the opacity of the grid to something like this. And I'm quite happy with this. Now we'll add seven blocks and I'm going to use the rounded rectangle tool for this and then I'm going to change the fill maybe to a white. Then we'll just create these rectangles maybe with a roundness of let's say 40. I create these tutorials so you learn how to do things not to straight up copy people. So you can always change the colors, the style, things like that. I'm just going to move this over holding alt and shift and holding alt and shift, holding alt and shift. Now maybe I'll make it a bit smaller and then I'm just going to duplicate this layer, move it over, duplicate the layer, move it over. Now select all the layers and then go to align and then distribute layers in the center. So the spacing is completely the same between them. Then we move them all over to align them a bit in the center, something like this. I'm going to scale them a bit because I don't like how they're aligned. Move them a bit closer together. Now I will add all my assets. Again, you can download these in our Discord community, the Social Creator Club. Click toggle switches modes. I'm also going to make the shape layers 3D. I'm going to turn the skyline on first. So we have the skyline and I'm just going to align it with our layer. So it's somewhat the same. And of course, move it back. Press P for the position and then move it to the back of this layer. Something like this. And then of course, we're going to scale it up. We have to reposition it after maybe something like this now i'll throw a tint over it map black to to dark blue and map white to maybe like a light blue and i might add a brightness and contrast on it so i can increase the contrast a bit so the image is just a bit more contrasty and then i can also change the white maybe to a bit darker or again you can play around with this for now i'll keep it like this then we'll add the hourglass. And for this one, we need to make some changes. And of course you can do this in uh, uh, Adobe Illustrator, but you can also right click and go to create shapes from vector layer. Uh, it will just do it all in After Effects, which is great because we can go to contents, we can check the groups. And I think this is the background one. So we'll remove that. And I also want to remove the shadow. It's the bottom group. And now we can even change the colors, uh, but I can also just, again, see what happens if we're gonna put a tint on this again. Um, we can even copy and paste the tint of the skyline to keep the same colors, see what happens. So I'm gonna copy this over and I'm gonna paste this on our hourglass. And this works quite well, although I do think this is a bit too dark. I think it can be way lighter. But what's cool is that we can also just create or change the colors of the individual groups. Let's say I want the whole uh, liquid or sand in this case to have a different color. Uh, you can just select that and change the color of it, which is really great. Uh, again, you can do this in Illustrator too, but this works uh, great too. For now, I'm just going to keep the tint on it and make it 3D uh, like always. And it's way too big. 
So I'm gonna also scale it down, uh, something like this. And of course, change the position to make it more towards the camera. Uh, and you'll see later when we're gonna animate it that this really helps to create and sell the effect. Rotate it a bit with R to rotate it, move this over, something like this. Maybe make it a bit smaller and then I'm gonna put it in the top left and call it a day. And then we have some other elements like the paper cups and the thousand dollar. For the paper cup, I'm just gonna quickly mask around it because it doesn't want to be converted to a shape. You do this by just clicking the pen tool and then just clicking around the shape and this doesn't have to be perfect. So I added the elements and also quickly added text. Again, this is really simple guys. Just take a horizontal type tool and just type your text, select the text that you want and make it bigger, change the styling a bit. Now I do want to add a glow to this. So I'm just gonna add a glow and change the intensity a bit, the radius a bit. If you want to copy this over, you can. And then right click, layer styles, and then drop shadow. Go into the drop shadows, and then I'm gonna spread the uh, drop shadow, the size especially, and then decrease the shadow just to add a bit more depth and also make the layer 3D. Now, the only thing that's missing is that these uh, squares are also creating a bit of a blur. If we go back to our example, you can see it. And there's also a shadow. And to do this, I'm gonna select all the shapes. I'm gonna pre-compose them. And we'll call these blocks, blocks. And of course, make it 3D again. And I'm first gonna create the shadows. So let's duplicate it. Go to tint, map white to black and we'll add a mask to it. So go to the rectangle tool and just mask everything, something like this, invert it, and then press F for feather, and then we're gonna feather it a bit. Something like this should work. Now I'll move down this layer, press R for rotation, X rotation minus 90, enter, move it down, press P for position, and we'll move it more towards the camera. Now these layers need to be scaled a bit because otherwise, we definitely can't see them. I will just move them over, something like this. Squeeze it down. Make sure that it's aligned with the blocks too. And as you can see, we have our shadows. Perfect. Now for the blur effect, I'm just going to create a layer, new adjustment layer. I'm going to put it above the blocks. Also make sure that the skyline is also behind or uh, beneath this. Maybe rename this to a blocks shadow just to make it more clear. And this is going to be the blocks blur. Add a Gaussian blur to this. Go to toggle switches modes, track mat, and use the blocks. Now we need to turn the blocks on again, and I'm gonna increase the blurriness. Now we go into our blocks layers, we'll select them all, press T for the opacity, change them to 100%, go back into our comp. Now duplicate the blocks layer, we'll move this beneath this, and I'm gonna turn this off again. First thing, go to T, and we're gonna decrease the opacity and as you can see the blur effect is now really noticeable this is perfect but what you also see is that these shadows are also really noticeable and that's because we changed the opacity of all the shape layers so we press t for the block shadow and we can also decrease this a bit now if you want you can even change the uh, gaussian blur uh, to more or less if you want that or you can change the opacity of the blocks altogether or maybe increase it a bit, something like this. And I think this looks so cool. Now let's animate this quick. Some are really easy. For example, this hourglass just rotates a bit during the scene. You can do this by pressing R and then changing the Z rotation, for example. A couple seconds in, we'll move it. And a couple seconds out, we'll move it again. And same goes for the cup. This is really easy, guys. Now, what is interesting is that the $1,000 bill is waving a bit. Now to animate the dollar, we're gonna use a wave warp effect. You can just drag this on. And first we're gonna change the wave width to really high, be something like 500. Change the wave height. <laughs> this is quite a funny effect. <laughs> can also change the uh, width again. I'll probably use something like this. Now you do see that the effect is cut off. So what we can do is copy this over, go to layer, pre-compose, move all attributes. And if we now paste it, Change the wave width to something like uh, 40 or maybe even lower, maybe even 3. Change the wave height and then it doesn't cut off anymore. I'm going to change the width again. And then to animate this, just hold Alt, click on the face and then type in time, then the asterisk 100. And then it will animate throughout the whole video. Now there's still some simple animations to show you. That's the text effect. 
We can just use a standard effect in the effects and presets and go to text, animate in, and then fade up words and slide up by words. Just open your text, go into your text. Then we go into the slide up by word. Just use the slide up by word. Now do check out my other videos. I also explain these text animations. Now for the shapes, I'm gonna go into our blocks. And to make it easy, I'm just gonna go to contents, rectangle, then transform rectangle path. And then you can see the scale here. You can just move this out, unlink it, and of course, then move it in. Something like this, put it to zero, and of course, right click, easy ease. Now we'll go into the next shape, just paste it, do this to all layers, and then to create a bit of delay, because now they're all uh, going together, uh, you can just move this over a bit like this, so it goes later. And this will also be applied to the blur, and it will also be applied to the shadow, as you can see. Now, the only thing that's missing is the camera movement. So we'll add a layer new camera. Okay. And then just press the position, keyframe it, move this over, and then we'll move it in on the last axis. And as you can see, there's beautiful depth to our whole layer, which is amazing. I really love when things come to life. And then it zooms out and reveals the scene. And if you did all these things, you'll get something like this. Of course, don't forget to subscribe. And again, thanks for all the positive comments, especially my last video, it went really well. It makes me so happy to see the community grow, the channel grow, also to get some people that buy the templates. It's, it's really amazing, guys. Leave your comment down below of what you want to see next. And then of course, I'll see you next time. Bye.